Tanya Brown, Director of Rep- Representing Special Olympics World Games 2027. Now, this is terrific. I was talking to Courtney about the fact that uh, this is a bid that they're putting toward uh, for it to be happening here in Perth, and we do welcome it to actually happen, Tanya. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm very well. Thank you, Jenny. I'm sorry that she me. went. Now you know how big the campus is. Yes. Yes, there you go. It's grown. <laughs> it has grown. It keeps growing, actually. Anyway, on the subject of this matter, um, have you been, have you ever bid before? to be part of this, to have the Games here in Perth, or is this the first time? Uh, Have I ever been before? Well, anybody. Has anybody ever put in a bid to have this particular event? This will be the first time it's held in the Southern Hemisphere. Wow. So whether there's been a bid put in by a nation in the Southern Hemisphere before, I don't know, but it's the first time... Okay that we will host in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I was also talking about a documentary. We've got movie tickets to give away to this called Embrace. And ah, it's about, uh, yes, yes. Uh, young people who are facing challenges of disabilities yes. or whatever. Yes. And isn't it great we're talking about this so much more than we ever used yeah, to? it is wonderful. I think it's yeah. um, just that broadening of mindset and being inclusive well you know it's time that some people who have got everything going for them should stop feeling that they are more superior Mm. that's what it's all about Mm. anyway part we won't do a lecture um it's good to have you here to talk about this today um when did you start putting all this together because it's a very professional um dialogue that you're putting out there yes so it's been coming for uh the World Games bid for two and a half years. Yeah. And or we've been in conversation around it for about two and a half years. And we had uh, it go through our national board in Jan- in March last year. Right. And then it went in earnest to develop the bid. And that's the bid glossy, as we call it, that went through um, to really pike interest and share what the Special Olympics is about. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Special Olympics to start with and then mm. how we wish to be very much part of that. Looking, just before you do, looking at the front of the brochure here, the photograph of the attendance is phenomenal. Yes. What's the history of the Games? So, um, Special Olympics started in 1968 in the US. Um, it was started by Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Oh, yes. And it yeah. um, started as a backyard camp um, for people with intellectual disability to create opportunities and use the catalyst of sport to um, see capability yeah. and, you know, find pathways for people where there were um, maybe Gosh, not opportunities. it's grown, has it not? It's grown. <coughs> and so it's taken... Um, it was held outside the US for the first time in 2003, which was in Dublin. And uh, that was an amazing event opened by Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Uh, that really inspired the Perth dream and, you know, seeing images like this and in Dublin, the opening ceremony makes you think of Optus Stadium. Yes, it, well, we've got the facilities yeah, now, Yeah, we, we have the facilities. Yeah. So it sort of started this and when you see the immense um, opportunities it creates and how it links people together because yeah. it's a humanitarian event, mm. the biggest humanitarian event in the world. And it's been going all these years, yeah, on a, these apart years. from COVID, I suppose. Bit of a uh, so there. COVID was tough, um, yeah. really tough, and more so on, um, you know, our um, cohort where there's already barriers to participation, and so having a pandemic hit was really tough because sports stopped entirely. This must be a very big organisation to pull something like this together. Yes, Special Olympics is the biggest health organisation in the world with over 6 million athletes globally. Wow, that is... But that sort of points out, does it not, the number of people... Uh, that present themselves with some form of disability. Yeah. Yeah, that is huge. Um, In Australia, 850,000. People with intellectual disability. It is intellectual, it's not just physical. No, there's lots of comorbidities, but um, intellectual disability. Okay, so pulling all this together sounds fine if you you are in control of your life and everything like that, but getting people to participate must be something that's very exciting for them. Yeah, well, for everyone. Well, um, well I get that, but the, the it, participants, you know? So the participants are amazing. You know, that's what it's um, all about. We actually just yesterday held an event at Coburn Soccer Club where we announced the Team WA to go to our national games in Launceston in October. Oh, great. So we oh. do have teams already yes. here. And so across, um, I think we're sending 
or it might be a hundred, it's, it's at least a hundred, it might be slightly more athletes over to Launceston for Team WA. Is this the first time? No. No, this is what I'm trying to find. Yes. I haven't heard a lot about this before, yeah. you see. So, um, I guess COVID has been really tough and prior to that, there were some amazing people that um, Special Olympics was... Um, you know, burgeoning and, you yeah. know, thriving. Um, and then it kind of um, had a hiatus or it um, stalled and there was a big um, Asia-Pacific Games back in 2013 and after that it kind of um, went through a bit of a stumbling block phase, I would say, yeah. and then it's come it's come back and recovered and it's been building and building. In WA, it was held together by some amazing volunteers. Um, Dot and Rosie, uh, the stalwarts of one is 40-year volunteer in special. 40 Olympics. years, good on them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and incredible. they're just like these oracles of yeah. knowledge and they've kept it going. But then um, as um, we sort of, I came involved just by chance and could see that we could help and um and then once you have a touch point you kind of <laughs> never uh, never hit reverse you no, just kind of just keep going yeah. and um i think you know it's it's like a wonderful um family of people um that affect you know that link us all through well it would i mean i I could imagine the families of people of children or teenagers or young adults everyone and all their families absolutely right with with all the world affairs that we have to deal Mm -hmm. with and carry on i mean does it put any dampener on when these events get held um, so they're held every four years, like the yeah, Olympics. Yeah, like the Olympics, um, yeah. A dampener in terms of... Well, can people being part of it from certain countries at the moment, ah, perhaps. So that's interesting. In 2019, it was held in Abu Dhabi, and they had 198 nations and territories attend. There were a couple left out for Obvious political reasons. reasons. So, yeah, um, that's I think always going to happen. I yeah, think. I think, um, but it's, you know, uh, about inclusion so it's about yeah. coming together using the catalyst of sport to demonstrate well, the that. whole point of it of olympic games and games like this mm. is the fact that we all compete in a, in a friendly way yes. and get to understand each other a bit so more it's the only organization in the world that can use the word olympics by mandate by the ioc the para drops the o yeah and um so very powerful branding very much so well you would have mm. a lot behind you now what sort of a chance do we have here in perth and Optus, as you said, could be the recommended venue. Yes, we've got opening and closing ceremony, but it activates hubs. Oh, I see, yes, around. competing, yeah. Um, that's right, and it's on-field, off-field, so there's healthy athlete program and there's um, symposia around policy and it has um, a young athlete program. You know, there's all of this off-field activity that wraps around the traditional sport. Over themselves. what period of time? Over 10 days. 10 days. Gee, that's intense, isn't it? Yeah. That's a lot of work for you guys. <laughs> how do you have to present? To everyone. Yeah. Well, yeah. How, do you, how do you present your application? Is it, oh, can I call it an application? Um, so we put a bid in. A bid. So we lodged a bid on the 15th of July. Oh, you've done that. How, that's how heavy was it's it? international. <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's a telephone book. Yes. <laughs> that's it's amazing. Beautiful. And amazing. That um, is. That's a Derbel Yarrigan. Oh, the Swan River. Pity we haven't got a camera in here, but that is just that is congratulations um, on that. So it is just an amazing. How, did you, how do you get funding to do all of the, the, Honestly, this is that's extremely professional. Yeah, that is of support. And it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. And how, what sort of case do you put forward to say that Perth would be ideal? Um, so, so many things. There was a bid pack issued, and then we. Um, did a f- we had done a feasibility back last year um, and then this was the bid development on the back of, you know, Perth being demonstrated to have the capacity, the capability to host. So, How many visitors would you get come through? 7,000 visitors. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot of accommodation. The that's biggest good. event Perth ever contemplated hosting. It's got to be good for the state, does yeah, it not? Yeah, it's a wonderful ripple. So um, how long do you have to wait and, and who did you have to present that to? So we lodged that with um, Special Mix International. We then um, have been listed as the top two nations in the world one of two but um Gosh. really the forerunner because they build out a pipeline now to put um nations into future um rather than having a very competitive environment here similar yeah. to the olympics they build out pipelines so th- we had immense support um that it was 
and we've been collaborative. It's an amazing process that you I bet develop. I that. And so we, together with EY, did our feasibility in part in partnership with the state government funding that we had for the feasibility. And then Deloitte did our bid development and legacy goals with us, which is this document. And so we will then present this. In October, we have a delegation of Special Olympics International coming out to, to you. Perth. Yeah. Um, to do the site visit. Oh, so where would you be taking them to um, look at sites? So, like, you know, they sh- you showcase um, what we've put into the bid, so Optus. Right. So, um, but venues, I guess, for yeah, all the other activities. The hubs we've identified. Have you got those ready? Yes. We're, You've dusted we're everything off? It. Yeah, <laughs> we've, got, we've had some amazing, you know, it's, it's, there's an amazing itinerary coming together from, like, you know, wonderful people that are supportive and on the back of... So we actually do a presentation to the board while they're here, yeah. connected virtually. But you have been narrowed world. down, have you, Ooh. as country of yes. choice? Yes, Oh, my gosh, and what then, would that mean? Then they come to Launceston with us, a handful of them, to experience the National Games. Oh, OK. Hilarious. They go, where's Launceston? <laughs> where's <laughs> they Tasmania and they're like, oh, the one they live <laughs> off the map. <laughs> the one we leave off the map? Because <laughs> they look it up and they're like, how long does it take? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a big country. So where are the representatives coming from? They come from all over the world. Wow. Yes. So every time we have a call, which is usually 8 or 7 a.m. or p.m., yeah, they dial in from all over the world, from Ireland, from Seoul, from Gosh. the U.S., both sides, from... Um, do you Barcelona. have interpreters? Do you have interpreters? No, everyone um, speaks English. Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. oh that's that's a good breakthrough, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Look, you're sounding extremely hopeful, yes. and I would think you know, I would just think everyone should know more about what you guys have been doing, absolutely, and Thank what you. you plan for. Because what would this all do? Or not only put Perth on the map, but just so show the world how keen and eager you are to break these barriers down mm. and have these athletes. I mean, they must absolutely love competing. Oh, it. it um, fills you up yeah Yeah, of course it's amazing but they're fierce they're really we play unified as well yeah and they're far better what (laughs) age groups are we talking um so the young athletes start at two years old to eight years old and then it goes forever really as long as you want you can compete Oh, my gosh. So you've got medals and so forth? Yes. Getting yes. pressed yeah, and... Gold, silver, bronze and, um, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's remarkable. It's But it's a participation-based. So the athlete oath is let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Oh, that's lovely. We should all adopt that motto. Yes. So um, that, that I just am so intrigued by this. If people want to help out or know more about it, they can Ooh. go to your website, I yes. assume, can they? Yeah. Which w- is? www.perth2027.org. .org. Are you looking for volunteers if you do so manage to get Volunteers can um, put their names down. It says we've got a page that says I will cheer, I will volunteer, I will care, I will um, compete, I will partner. So it oh, kind of indicates cool. what someone's interest might be and as we get moved closer. But we also, you know, our state committee is here running, you know, they're the ones that are supporting the national games yeah. and taking our delegation across with medical support, with, yeah. um, you know, one to four athlete carer ratio. Gee, that's a lot um, of commitment, isn't it? Yeah. It's You'd huge. need so many volunteers if we do get the event. 20,000. You want 20,000? How many have you got? <laughs> well, Rotary, it'll be 100 years of Rotary in 2027 and they've said we have 6,000 but you oh, have good. a lot. That's a start. I'm um, volunteering WA. You'd need amazing. drivers and people at the, at the arenas and yeah, everywhere wouldn't you? Absolutely. But people love volunteering for Ooh, things like this they don't do. they? It ignites um, people to for purpose I think and yeah. You know, that human connection is overwhelming. It's uh, it's something so nice to be involved in. Oh, I can it's see beautiful. that. I mean, you've loved it and you just happened to come across it? Or? Yes. <laughs> yeah, how was that? Um, I went to a breakfast in 2017 at the Hyatt um, in the Gershwin's rooms as a guest of um, Bank of Queensland through my um, day job. Yeah. <laughs> and I was overwhelmed by the... T- transformation that sport was able to deliver to someone sharing their story and so i became involved and uh they asked if i wanted to join the fundraising lunch committee and you put your hand up i said yes that's when it changes your life yes indeed (laughs) you know sport like music i've always said is very powerful an effect for people Mm. um it elates them 
at they feel fabulous at the time their team is winning even if they're not at the time they just get so excited and even music can make you mm. feel better about life can't absolutely. it absolutely yeah and this is uh, even more so i think yeah. than just our afl team well it is well it's that we're using AFL as the demonstration sport, so quintal okay. essentially Australian rooted in Aboriginal history. Is it athletics? Just very briefly tell yeah, us. 26 sort of sports. 26 different sports. Yeah. Gee whiz. So it does, um, you know, and AFL is the demo sport. In China, once it was dra- dragon boat racing. Yeah. That was the demonstration yeah. sport. So, you know, to give you an idea, but it does cricket, um, soccer. Wow. Um, bocce. Would it be televised? Uh, so it's... Has, in Abu Dhabi, there were 69 billion media impressions. It reached wow. 760 million households through television, oh, right? Oh, that is fabulous. ESPN are the partner. What about Australia? Will we be able to see it if it comes... Well, for wherever, wherever it's shown, but hopefully Perth. Yes. We'd be able to so, see that. That would um, be a massive event. The local us. organising committee does the has the national rights... Okay. And works out where it well, lands and goes. It's never happened before. It's never happened before. And with you guys. to make it happen. <laughs> More the reason. And for you too and all the volunteers that are being involved, congratulations. Thank you very much. Look forward yeah. to it happening. Curtain Radio.